What's up guys, my name is Brandon and watchOS 10 is perhaps the biggest software update for the Apple Watch ever. And in this video, I'll be showing you more than 60 brand new features and changes included in the update. And to install this update, you do need to have an Apple Watch Series 4 or later. First up is a brand new feature called Smart Stack. And what this does is it brings widgets to the Apple Watch. So simply go up on your digital crown and you will invoke this new mode here and you will see we have the date and the time right up top and the background is also kind of translucent so it changes based on your watch face and if you continue going down you will see widgets so we have our widgets right here and then you can go to all apps if you want to as well now if you tap and hold on one of these you will go into an edit mode where you can not only remove and add different widgets but you can also pin certain ones to the top so for example if i wanted to pin my activity right here i'll just tap on the pin icon and it will go all the way up to the top and you can have multiples pinned at the same time tap on the plus icon and you will see you have featured up top so these will change every time you go in here and you have different ones to choose from here as well you have a pretty good selection of widgets to add let's say we want to add a sleep widget we'll tap on that and you can see you even get different options for different types of widgets that you want to add so if you want your schedule or if you just want the previous night's data you can do that so I'll tap right there and it adds it down to the bottom we'll tap on done just like you do on like an iPhone. So I just threw a second watch on my wrist and throughout this video you're going to see watchOS 9 on the left, watchOS 10 on the right. So let's talk about the control center because before in watchOS 9 you would have to swipe up from the bottom to do that but now in watchOS 10 that does not exist and that's because there's a new way to invoke the control center which is by pressing the side button one time that invokes the control center which also looks a little bit different we have a few ui changes in here so if we go into the battery you can see what it looked like on watch os 9 compared to watch os 10. the battery little icon is different it says battery up in the top right low power mode is in the middle and it's just one big button instead of a switch and also the time remains up in the top right whereas you could not see the time before once you went into this and if we scroll down to the bottom and go to the airplay menu you can see the difference between watch os 9 and watch os 10 here as well it's going to be a very consistent look in watch os 10 and also you'll notice that the x is up in the top left compared to done in watch os 9 and if we double press on the side button you will see that we have a change to the animation with apple pay and also when you scroll down the cards appear a little bit bigger and it's just a difference in the ui for apple pay now i should also mention the new watch faces here in watch os 10. so first off is this one that you've been seeing the whole time that is a new watch face called palette so if we go into here and go to edit you can see we have quite a few different colors to choose from so you will get a lot of colors to choose from and what's cool about this one is that there's like different combinations of just one color and then you have kind of multiple colors down here at the bottom and if you go all the way down to the bottom you can tap to add more colors and you can see kind of the different collections colors so like spring fall summer going back all the way to 2015 but I like this one so we're going to stick with that and if you go over to the complications you have four different places to add in your complications and you can see there is also a new UI here when you go to add complications it looks a lot better and then the other new watch face is this one right here for Snoopy so if you go into here you can see we have peanuts one all the way to peanuts three you can see the different ones right there you can also change the color so change the color of the background of the watch and this also animates as well so if i do the great pumpkin for example and then go to this you can see it does animate which is pretty cool pretty fun now one thing i do want to mention is that you cannot switch through watch faces like you used to be able to so in watch os 9 for example if you wanted to switch over to a new watch face all you would have to do is simply swipe over from the edge and you would switch to different watch faces but you cannot do that here in watch os 10. now some people are going to like that but you know me personally i like switching between my watch faces quickly but you cannot do that anymore you have to tap and hold and then switch to your different watch face oh and i should also mention that for the wayfinder watch face which is my favorite apple watch ultra watch face if you want to go into the red mode before you would have to just simply swipe up on the digital crown but now of course we have a smart stack which means that you cannot do that but if you go into the watch face if you tap and hold and then go to edit and then go over 
one to night mode, you will see that you have an auto setting. So it can automatically turn on or you can turn that to always be on or off. The now playing screen in watchOS 10 looks much better than it did on watchOS 9. So for example, I have a video pulled up right here and you will see a lot of differences in this. So the play, pause, and the next and rewind are now down at the bottom. We have a new arrow to go back in the top left. And also we have in the top right, the device that it's playing from. And if you tap on that device, it will show you where that audio or video was playing. And if you press on the back button, you will notice a slight change to the now playing UI in this section as well. And if you look up in the top middle of the watch face now, you will see that we have our now playing icons for music and also for activity. And these are also clickable. So it's a small little thing to touch, but you can see you can tap on it and it does take you to whatever is showing up there for activity or music. Now, something I always do, and I don't really know why, but I take my heart rate a lot throughout the day. And that has changed in watchOS 10. So if we go ahead and tap on a heart rate reading right here, you will notice that the animation and the whole UI looks completely different in watchOS 10. So it looks kind of a lot more serious and a lot more advanced here in watchOS 10. And also it shows our BPM down in the bottom left versus in this little card like it was in watchOS 9. Just a vast difference between the two. And before in watchOS 9, you had the resting heart rate and the walking average right there as well if you just went ahead and swiped down but now in watchOS 10, if you go down, you will see you have the range right here along with a resting rate walking average and you will notice how it kind of fades in between each page so that animation is different as well compared to just having different cards right here another application that i use on a daily basis and i really don't know why is the noise application and you will notice that the ui also looks significantly better here in watch os 10 so we have more of like a meter versus these little you know dials right there and it shows okay with a check mark down here just looks a lot more clean a lot more modern than it did previously. WatchOS 10 also introduces optimized charge limit. So this is now available on the Apple Watch SE, Series 6, Series 7, and Series 8. So this is a little bit different than the previous optimized battery charging features that we've had in the past. And this feature is on by default when you install watchOS 10. When you wake up in the morning after a sleep mode has been disabled, you will notice that we have the new good morning screen, which looks way better than watchOS 9 in my opinion. And speaking of sleep, we have a new redesign in the sleep application. So you will notice that it looks a lot more clean and a lot better here in watchOS 10 than it did in watchOS 9. And again, we're sticking with that full screen design like we have in all applications, which I'll show you in a minute. And we also just go from page to page with a little fade animation compared to being on these cards. All right, so now it's finally time to check out the home screen of watchOS 10. And you will notice pretty much right away that we do have a change here. So instead of having applications all over the place and being able to go you know, left and right in this big honeycomb circle, now we have kind of a combination of a honeycomb and a list view. So you have three, four, three, four in the rows continuously. You cannot go side to side like you could previously. You can't zoom in and out on your applications like you used to be able to. This is just kind of a more organized, refined look to the home screen. Now, of course, you can still change the order of applications and everything if you tap and hold on those, you will see the little X's and you can move these around to wherever you would like. And as I briefly mentioned a moment ago, pretty much every application, every stock application on watchOS has been redesigned with watchOS 10. So for example, if I go into the activity application here, you will notice that it just takes up more of the screen, just looks more modern. And we have these little buttons in the corners here as well. So like up in the top left, we have this button for our weekend or our weekly summary. If we tap in the bottom left, you can see this is where we have have our sharing and in the bottom right is where we have our different awards that we have and on watchOS 9 all you had was just this right here and you just keep scrolling down and you'd see all your information and you had to tap into weekly summary or change goals at the very bottom but now in watchOS 10 we have those buttons but we also can scroll down and you will see a much more immersive view for pretty much everything so we have move right here we have exercise you can see they are color coordinated as well we have stand and then we have today's view a quick view of today's stats and then out down at the bottom we have activities if you've recorded those and check out the activity ring up in the top left by the way when we go throughout this you will see it kind of highlights what you're looking at on the circle there just the small details and watch os 10 are just amazing i mean look at the little animation there as well when we go back up 
the animation in those little lines there. I don't really use the weather application a lot, but I have to really respect the big redesign in watchOS 10 for the weather application. So in watchOS 9, you can see this is how it looked when we had a little list view right here, which first off, you saw that new animation. But if you go into the weather, Take a look at that difference. I mean, that is a massive difference from watchOS 9 to watchOS 10. This almost looks like an iPhone screen over here. So it looks so awesome. You can see all of your data right there. Again, you have your different buttons. So like up in the top left, we have the menu. And then up in the top right, we have what you want to view. So condition, temperature, precipitation, wind. You have all that to choose from. And if we go ahead and go back and then swipe down, you have this view, which also looks much better than it did previously. It was just kind of this circle, but now looks a lot more modern and better. And if we go down again, we have our week view here. So you can see upcoming weather. And just look at the difference between the two. I mean, it is night and day better. I don't think anybody can argue that. The messages application also gets a really nice update. So you will see your pinned contacts right here in their own separate page for easy access to text those people. And then if you go down, you will see this is where you have your list view of your different text conversations. In the podcast application, again, the text is centered along with the time, whereas before that was on the left and the right. We have a now playing button up in the top right for easy access to that. That. And if we go to, let's just go to listen now, for example, if we go to our listen now page, you will notice again, it takes up pretty much the entire screen. And there's not a huge difference between these watch faces. I mean, 45 and 49 millimeters, but you would think it's a much bigger difference with how good the screen and you know how well watch OS 10 is taking advantage of that real estate. So you will see these different cards for the episodes. Again, they're color coordinated and everything just look really great. And you have these three dots up here as well, where you can go to show or mark as played. Oh, and by the way, I just found out you can invoke smart stack. The first feature I talked about by simply swiping up from the middle of the watch face that will invoke this as well. So you can see your different widgets. The workout application has some UI changes. So you will notice that we have that little green tint in the background. And instead of saying open goal, we now have little text at the bottom that just says open. And if you go into a workout, you will notice that lock has been replaced. So now it just shows end, pause, segment, and stop. And speaking of cycling, by the way, there are some pretty major changes to cycling in watchOS 10. So you can now pair your Apple Watch with Bluetooth accessories to add additional, more accurate data like cadence, speed, and power. You can also start a cycling workout from your watch and it will automatically show up as a live activity on your phone. And when you tap on it, it takes over the entire display so you can see everything on your iPhone as well. There's also a new power zones workout view heading into the home application there is a major ui redesign here and this really kind of mimics what the iPhone's home application looks like. It looks so much better than it did previously. You can see there wasn't really an issue with it in watchOS 9, but it just looks so much more modern and so much more familiar here in watchOS 10. You also have the intercom up top and you have the little favorite icons down at the bottom. Whereas before it's kind of janky in there and just did not look as good. The timers application has even been redesigned. So you will see that we have this different look for the timers app now in watchOS 10. And if we started a timer, let's just say for one one minute, for example, I did one hour, you can see the difference in how this looks as well. And just like on iOS 17, we have this plus in the top right, where we can add an additional timer. So you can have multiple timers going at once, whereas before you were limited to just one timer. Heading into news, we now get a full screen view of the image for that article in the background. And we don't have the top stories up in the top left anymore, which just did not look good. So you can kind of scroll down. And every time you scroll down, you get a new article, whereas before you had to tap on next story and then next story, you just kind of had to go side to side. Now it's up and down and it's just much more fluent and easier to see what you're looking at and also to read the articles. And again, just like we've seen throughout all these other apps, we have simple buttons on the corners versus these two big buttons that are just black in the middle with text and not a glyph icon. The maps application has a new look. So it now shows you right away where you're at. And we have a little search down on the bottom right and a compass in the bottom left. You can also get the offline maps from your iPhone to show up on your Apple watch if you have them downloaded. And speaking of maps, there's also a lot of other 
background changes here as well. So you now have topographic maps. So you can now explore mountains, valleys, lakes, and rivers in great detail, including trails, contour lines, elevation, and points of interest. There's also now elevation alerts. So you will now get notifications when you pass certain elevation thresholds. Another great feature in the maps application is trail information. And this is gonna show you details of nearby trails, including the difficulty, the length, and all of that. So if I go into one of them right here, you can see we have a quick call button, we have the distance, we have photos, and if you scroll down a little bit, we have trails and it shows how easy they are, how many miles, if it loops or not, if it's points. You know, if I go to this one, for example, if I go ahead and click on this, it will show the difficulty. It says it's difficult. It says it's a point to point trail. It shows the elevation gain, the duration it's gonna take, all of that right here from your Apple Watch. And in the Compass application, you now get a 3D view, and you'll also notice some UI changes here as well. So you can see that the 46 feet is down there at the bottom middle. We also have that eye up in the top left-hand corner. In the clock application, we have a pretty big difference here from watchOS 9 to watchOS 10. So instead of just having a view of the different times, we now have a visual for the times, including the sunrise and sunset times down in the bottom right. We have a list view here if you wanted to go to a different city or state or country and you can see they are color coordinated as well whereas before they were kind of just all boring right there and you didn't really have a view or animation like this and we do have a visual here as well where we can use the crown to go and see you know what it's going to look like at that time during the day in your select location in the contacts application you can now see the photo of the person if you have one set and their name is up in the top right and the contact buttons for texting and calling are now in the bottom left hand corner and that new name drop feature will also work for the apple watch as well so if you tap apple watches together it's going to exchange contact information just like you can on the iphone with ios 17. there's also new work workout APIs that are going to allow developers to create new experiences for sports like golf and tennis thanks to the more powerful motion sensors that are in the Series 8 and the Apple Watch Ultra. And those sensors can detect rapid changes in direction and acceleration. Apple also mentions that training platform Training Peaks can now import your scheduled workouts directly into the workouts application. Something interesting that Apple mentioned is that semantic system colors, like the buttons, will auto adapt the contrast when on a vibrant background. So for example, I have this very vibrant background so if I had a very bright green button at some point, it would reduce that contrast to make it not clash so much. And that's throughout all of watchOS. If you are an Apple Fitness Plus subscriber, you can now create custom plans. So you can see the weekly schedule here, along with the total time per day and the length of the plan. You can find this on your iPhone in the fitness application. You get a little pop-up for it right here. You can also now stack multiple workouts and meditations to quickly and seamlessly move on to your next activity. If we head into the mindfulness application, we have a new mental health feature here for state of mind. So in this, you can now track your mind and your kind of mood throughout the day. So if you go to state of mind, for example, it says if you want to log how you feel right now, or if you want to log how you felt overall today. So if you want to do this one time at night, or if you want to do it throughout the day, you have that option. So I'll just do how I felt overall today. So you can choose if you felt unpleasant, neutral, if you were happy or sad throughout the day. So I'll just select on very pleasant right here. So tap on the plus or the check mark in the top right. And what best describes this feeling? I feel amazed. What's having the biggest impact on you? So current events, dating, education, family, fitness, friends, health. You can do all that right there. I'll just do health, for example. And that was it. So it just says logged. And it says you can also get you know, notifications throughout the day, basically saying, Hey, do you want to log how you're feeling right now? That way it can track everything in the health application on your iPhone and on the Apple watch to kind of see, you know, what your state of mind has been. Now, something I mentioned in my Mac OS Sonoma video, which by the way, that is linked in the description if you did not already see that, but unlocking your Mac with your Apple watch is now much faster when you have Sonoma installed. It's pretty much instant and much quicker than it was on Ventura. Also new on the Apple watch, 
watch and watch os 10 you can now receive group facetime audio calls so those were not supported before but they are now in watch os 10. you can also now view facetime video messages so that is a new feature in ios 17 where if somebody doesn't pick up on facetime you can leave a video message and you can now also watch those on the apple watch and then finally enterprise users can now add mdm configuration profiles to deploy applications and configure vpns so that is watch os 10 a massive update that changes virtually everything at least from a ui standpoint so hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did and if you appreciate wearing two watches on my wrist for this video i would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up also make sure to subscribe it because i will find even more watch os 10 features in the coming months but anyways guys thanks again for watching and i'll see you soon